Here's a quick video on uh, a, one aspect of parametric equations, parametric curves. Let's first look at the curve defined by the equations x equals 3t and y equals 6t 2, 6 minus 2. One way to start going with that is just what we were doing in class, plug in some values for t. So for example, 0 gives you 0 minus 2. 1 gives you x equals 3, y equals 4. And we shouldn't be afraid of negative t. That's just before this arbitrary t time. That's often useful. t is minus 1, you get minus 3 and minus 8. So remember, we don't plot the t as a coordinate. We plot the x and y, and the t's are going to be the labels. So let's do that. I did that already here. And uh, whoa, here we go. So here's these three points. And I've got the labels. t equals 1 is this little o. t equals 0 is this guy. t equals minus 1 is this guy. And it looks like we've got um, a straight line. And if we sketch the straight line that we think we have, then here we go. Looks like we should be getting a straight line through those three points. Now, let's go back look back at the equations and see if that's plausible. These are both linear functions of t, and we know if y and x are related by a linear relationship with no squares or square roots or cosines or anything like that, then it should be a straight line. So we should be able to show that algebraically. So let's, let me show you how to do that. Um, that's called eliminating the parameter. It's not always possible to do, and the most interesting curves are where you can't do it, but if you can, it's nice to, to relate it back to earlier material. So one way to do that is just solve for t in one of the equations. The easier one is definitely the, the top one, although not, not like the second one would be hard. So we solve for t in one of the equations, and then we plug it into the other. It's kind of like the procedure for solving a system by substitution. The point is we're not trying to solve and find out what's the one value that works here. There's many values that work here. We know that's a whole straight line's worth of points, x and y. But we're trying to eliminate part of um, the complexity by eliminating t. So now y, we're just going to substitute that in. t is x over 3. And so in fact, we get y equals 2x minus 2. And that is a straight line. And it gives us information about that line, for example. Uh, the slope equals 2. And the intercept is minus 2. Let's see if that works. Intercept minus 2. OK, if we look at the scale here, that's 10, 5. Yeah, minus 2. And that, in fact, of course, was the pl point we plotted. It was 0 minus 2. We already knew the intercept there, really. And then the slope, uh, the scale's uneven here. But if you, we will go over by 3, we go up, it turns out, by 6 from minus 2 to 4. So it looks like uh, that's correct. So one more quick example. Suppose we started out with these equations. We probably don't expect that to be a straight line, although maybe secretly it would be. And here, we could solve for t in terms of x, but it'd be a little ugly. We get square roots. Here, the better way to do it is look, pa look, pattern. look for a pattern. Note that in y, we only see powers or even powers of t. Or in other words, powers of t squared. So sometimes you can just do some pattern matching. We see that y can be written as 4 times t squared squared plus 4 t squared plus 1. And now that just allows me to plug in directly. Every time I see a, a t squared, that's x. So sometimes this happens. 4x squared plus 4x oops, plus 1. And that's a parabola. And in fact, if we complete the square, I chose it so it would be a perfect square. It's 2x plus 1 quantity squared. So um, that's uh, one way to get the equation. So that would help us get do things like figure out its uh, vertex and um, the shift and things like that. In fact, uh, maybe even a better way to do it is, let's go back up to here y equals, let's take out the 4 and do it the usual way. Instead of just observing that it's a perfect square, that's equal to 4 times the quantity x plus 1 half squared minus 1 fourth plus 1. And so that is the 4 and the minus 1 fourth gives you minus 1 plus 1 cancels. So 
Oops. That's just going to be plus 1 half squared. Now, we could have also gotten that by just factoring out a 2 here. That's just 2 squared times. Just factor out a 2 out of x plus 1 squared. Either way, it's a shifted parabola, shifted to the left by 1 half, and then the 4 gives us a, a measure of how steep it is. I'm not going to graph this one, but I just wanted to point out that um, this is another technique that sometimes look for one of the variables, here t squared, in the formula for the other variable, and that can be real handy. Okay, that's enough.